So, you have a family? Yes, what of it? Oh, n nothing really. I just thought robots were built, not born. Your lack of processing power troubles me. My, uh, what? She's saying you're brain damaged. Oh, hey, wait. Uh, oh. H hey, wait, wait, where's Phoebe? <laughs> Hey, what what in the world has gotten into you? Scary laddie, scary room. Horsey, protect me from the scary laddie. Am I interrupting something? No, you just scared our new housemate. Ah, I see. I'm sorry for frightening you, Phoebe. You shouldn't be afraid. You saw me when we watched Coraline. There's nothing to fear about the darkness of my room. You should be more afraid of me. Stop it. Phoebe, what were you even doing in her room in the first place? Well, I was wondering what we could watch tonight. And I found something called my monster house. Then she came up behind me and scared me. Monster house, huh? That's a movie I haven't heard of in years. Why not revisit it and see what you think of it now? I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean, I, I don't have anything better to do. Isn't that a scary movie, though? Oh, you'll be fine. It won't be too bad, I'm sure of it. Did you really scare her that well? I did, but I didn't mean to. Pinky promise. I see. We'll talk later. I need ideas. No, 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 no. From what I remember, this movie is about a group of kids trespassing on an old man's property and then proceeding to fight it, hence the name. This movie was released way back in the year of 2006, and I remember seeing it in theaters with my family, though I was very young. All I remember is the ending. This movie has lived along in infamy within my memories, but all it's really useful for now is memes. Are you guys mentally challenged? Because personally, I don't think the movie was very good. If my memory serves me right, the movie opens with a little girl on a tricycle riding down the sidewalk, likely running from the cops with 60 kilos of coke in her trunk. Once she gets her trike stuck on the lawn of a random house, an old man runs outside to yell at her for straying off of the public sidewalk. Why doesn't she just, you know, move the bike off the lawn like a normal person? Because then there'd be no movie. Ah. Uh -uh. Fair. The guy rips the front bike wheel off like it's a fucking Barbie head and makes a troll face at the girl causing her to run away. He then looks at the camera, which then zooms out to reveal our protagonist. This is DJ, your everyday normal elderly stalking teenager. He heads downstairs to tell his parents about the literal theft and possible assault, but they brush it off and talk to him about going through puberty, because of course they do. Someone is hitting puberty. What's happening to my body? <laughs> Right, buddy? This doesn't seem so bad. Why was I even scared? If you're not scared, then why not venture onto the lawn yourself? Oh. Well, my mom told me not to bother strangers. Spooky, you're a dick. I know. After this, here comes everybody's favorite type of character, the fat best friend. They talk for a bit, blatantly explaining why the parents won't be present for the rest of the movie as they drive off. His best friend decides to show him a basketball, and after a failed attempt at landing a shot, he ends up beaming himself in the fucking face. Kid's name is Chowder, or Chungus McFat shit, or, or some shit. The boys find that the ball has rolled away into, who would have guessed it? The old man's yard. Is it ever said what his name is? It's said to be Nevercracker, but that doesn't sound funny enough. Let me guess. Your stupid meat processor is going to now give the house some stupid name, like Molesty Manor or something. Either that or Cum Cave. Oh, what cave? You've got internet, don't you? I do, I do. Can I look it up, sis? Absolutely not. The two kids argue about who's going to get the ball, with DJ opting not to touch the Redditor's grass, as it's probably filled with nails or landmines. But DJ eventually gives in and attempts to go grab the ball. But in response, the old man runs outside like an aggroed NPC. Stop! He chases DJ down, causing him to trip, and the old man grabs DJ, shouting at him before collapsing from a stroke, I think. So, so is it over yet? Well, no, there's like an hour and 20 minutes left. Horsey, why do we need to watch scary movies? Because it's October Eve and Lucy wants to bully you. What? No, I don't. Oh, yeah? Then turn off the movie. Fine, I will. 
Meanwhile, the boys don't notice the front fucking door slam shut, and an ambulance shows up to take the old man to the hospital. He gets tugged on by the grass and ends up dropping his keys, allowing the boys to access the house whenever they want. Then comes in the completely necessary teenage nanny character, whose name is Elizabeth, and she's the hot goth GF of this movie. Always gotta have one. DJ gets mommy dumped by the goth girl and heads up to his room, setting the key down as he enters. But after he falls asleep, he has a nightmare about the house. He wakes up to a phone call, but when he redials the number, the phone from the old man's house starts ringing across the street, even though no one is supposed to be home due to him, you know being in the hospital. Goth's GF and her boyfriend are vibing, and DJ acts all pissy about it, but the boyfriend shows his definitive douchebaggery by pretending to molest and murder DJ's stuffed rabbit. Hey, Lubot. Yeah? People like this don't last very long, do they? No. How much do you want to bet he dies? He'll bet 20 that he dies. <laughs> I'll bet 40 that he lives. Deal. Spritz, how do you even have that kind of money? Legal things. So then the guy disrespects the goth GF, and instead of getting her tier 3 subs to fight him, she just kicks him out of the house. Being the drunk intellectual he is, he decides to vandalize the old guy's house, but the door opens to reveal a kite he lost to Nebercracker when he was a kid. Getting just a bit too close, he's then vored by the house. Pay up, Frankie. Hey, hey, you, you know, I, excuse me for a moment. Oh no you don't. Forcey, come back. Don't leave me with these two. Why is that little one upset? Frightened? Scare? Yeah. With the nice guy now disposed of, we cut back to DJ and Chowder, dicking around at a construction site where literally nothing important happens except for them establishing the location. DJ wants to go into the house, and Chowder blackmail him into going trick-or-treating in exchange for his help. DJ agrees, albeit reluctantly, and they go back to his house. So while spying on the house, they notice a girl approaching it. They rush outside to save the damsel in distress, showing in full detail how Reddit white knights interact with humans out in the wild. Come here! Yes, over here! Does she not have a name? Jenny. Her name is Jenny, and she's like the driving force for these two morons and their hormones. And of course, they begin fighting over her affection. They decide to call the cops, and who would have guessed that they do nothing but threaten the children? Not once, but twice. And the second time happens to be when the house gets hungry again and it eats the cops. So naturally, they sneak into the house in hopes of finding out its dark secret. After watching police officers get eaten. They went into that thing. Does the mere thought scare you, Tiny? You no. Know. I'm not scared. Knock it off, Spooks. No. Uh -huh. Anyway, they decide to explore the house, finding out that the old man has bombs, and was part of an old military demolitionist squad. Using super soakers with flashlights, they move throughout the house and find the house's uvula, which causes it to wake up. Continuing even further into the house, they fall down a hole into the house's basement, where they find all the lost toys collected over the years. They also find a carnival car for an odd reason, seeing a padlock on the door and a sign reading, Constance the Gigantus. Walking inside the cage, they find the body of a woman, presumably the woman they saw in the pictures earlier, but it's covered in cement. There are gifts strewn about, as if the old man made a crude shrine for her, and DJ falls and manages to somehow crack the cement, awakening the house for a second time. In the ensuing chaos, woman manages to do something useful by saving the boys. How? triggering the gag reflex. Why would a house have the need for a gag reflex? Because the lady who saw in the basement was his wife who got covered in cement due to the kids pelting her with eggs. I what? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it turns out Nevercracker took her away from the circus job and brought them to a new house, but the kids just couldn't keep away from her thickness, so they bullied her, basically making her want to kill them. Nevercracker couldn't have his wife, you know, murder children, so he wrestled an axe away from her, causing her to trip and fall into a pit, where she would have just died, but, you know, being covered with cement apparently makes you a ghost. That seems awfully dramatic. Now the house pulls fucking trees out of the ground and uses them like hands for whatever reason. Why am I even surprised at this point? When it's chasing them. You know that the movie isn't going to hurt you, right? I might. No, you won't. Who's going to stop me? Lucy will. What, uh, oh, yeah, sure. I'll stop my sister who phases through floors. And they seem a little more excited about it. I, 
I don't know what you want. I'm just a commentary channel turned reviewer because I realized that I may be super gay on account of me being trans, but the level of gay commentary drama can reach is beyond even myself. Perhaps we finish the movie. Sure, let's see. Uh, so it chases the kids and the old guy down an alley to a construction site, and Chowder grows a pair, fighting the house with an excavator, while DJ and Jenny tried to kill it with dynamite. And in the end, Chowder wins the Jaeger battle. Yay, it's over. <laughs> Things aren't always as they seem, child. What does that mean? The house reforms into a gigantic monster th thing and starts ripping apart the excavator. DJ, now frozen with fear, is pushed into action after being plot convenienced. I wait, I mean kissed. He decides uh, being kissed is enough to almost risk dying for. They manage to light the fuse of the bomb, and like a moron, he unhinges the latch of the excavator hook, causing him to fall. Then, somehow, by some miracle, using a slingshot maneuver, he nails the house with a hole-in-one, blowing it into a pile of splinters. With the house obliterated and Constance's soul finally at rest, the town goes back about their lives as if the wooden kaiju didn't just rip apart a piece of heavy machinery. It then ends with Mr. Boomer becoming a happy and healthy member of the community. This movie was odd. I I definitely liked it more as a kid due to its simple watch a spooky factor, but nowadays it's just kind of not that good to look back on. The movie is just bad. The characters are ugly, the movie itself just doesn't make sense, and overall I just didn't enjoy it as much as I did back then. Though I will say it's a decent lazy fall afternoon movie. Nothing you'd watch multiple times, but something you can stick in front of kids to make them shut up for a bit. Ha! You owe me 20 bucks, douchebag survived. Draft. Mutters. Pay Wendy. Don't call me that. Don't make a bet if you can't pay for it. That wasn't even scary. That was just kind of boring. The scariest thing in this room is spooky. How does she even do that? I, I don't know, Spritz. I stopped asking after she ate my prom date.